Hi, y'all. I don't really even know where to start. This is not normal Chevis. I've had, you'll hear. Today, we are drinking. I don't even know how, I don't even like how that starts. Hey, I'm in a super shitty mood. Would you like to spend the next hour with me? <laughs> like, I'm not really in a shitty mood, but anyway, you'll hear. Today we are drinking Rain in Blood, and that is by Dark Horse Brewing. It's an orange pale ale, and it's brewed with blood orange juice. And y'all remember this? I, I needed to be reminded of this today. So that's the koozie we are using. Wait until you hear what the hell has been going on since the last time we spoke. Hey guys, Chevy Rell here. This is the Chevy Rail Stuff Podcast. Most of you are here for knitting and fiber-related things. I already know that this episode is going to be way more full of rambling nonsense than most other things. put a timestamp in. I'll do all the like personal bullshit that's been happening in my world first. I do have to say when I first started this podcast, I had every intent to only talk about fiber things. I figured that there were a lot of other podcasters who kind of went on about stuff that was going on in their world and that some people just might want to only hear about fiber. Throughout the course of me recording, which has been, gosh, I don't know, year and a half by now, I do know that a lot of you do enjoy all of the other stuff. So if you do, stick around. If not, I'll put a little timestamp right here. The main reason that I wanna share this stuff with you is because I am I'm seriously I feel like the universe felt like I was on an upswing for too long or something. There has been so many like things come at me that I don't even know. Like I have to laugh at it. I have to laugh at it. Like how is this happening sort of deal? So I'll go through it real quick. Well, Chev is quick because you know how that is. So this has sort of morphed into, I'm guessing y'all are knitting and, you know, stitching and bitching, that's what it's all about, right? I kind of feel like if you were all here in my stuff room, this is the kind of stuff that we'd be talking about. It's just that I'm only talking to a camera and you can't talk back to me. I do love hearing your comments because it makes me feel like I'm not alone. To be totally honest, I've basically been on the verge of tears for, <laughs> for like a week. So I'm gonna try not to cry because it's been hella hard. This is sort of like a diary because I don't take a diary or I don't write a diary or do journaling. I've tried many times and I just never keep up on it. So this is kind of like that for me as well. I can look back and be like, oh my God, remember that time when all that shit happened at once? Uh, there's a tarot card called the wheel and the wheel spins, right? So what that card is, and I know some of you aren't into tarot, but when you pull that card, it's typically like a reminder that life is always spinning. There's always ups and downs. Have you ever seen uh, Parenthood with Steve Martin? Is that right? Steve Martin? The banjo. I think it's Steve Martin. Why am I blanking? Anyway, him, white hair, was in The Jerk. There is a scene in that movie. It's an excellent movie if you haven't seen it. It's from the 80s. There's a scene in that movie that the grandma is sort of like old and senile and she just kind of like mills about and nobody pays her much mind and somebody asks her something and she tells a story about, and I'll actually link it below. Actually, now that I've said that, I wonder if I've done it before. I might have linked it in other episodes because I, I go back to it quite often. She tells this story about riding a roller coaster and she said it was so you know, 
hard going up the hill, but then it was so much fun going down and that it would be so boring to just ride a straight track. So in life, there's a lot of ups and downs and you know when you're on the downs basically the message is you roll with the punches and when you're on the ups write it while you've got it that's sort of the wheel tarot card well currently I feel like I'm underneath the wheel and there are spokes that are like hitting me in the head as it's spinning <laughs> like that's what I feel like right now first off the teeth I want to thank all of you for your outpouring of love on my teeth situation. I had so, so many stories of people who are in similar boats or who have been in similar boats, other dental woes that have cost a gazillion dollars. It very much made me feel like I was not alone. Um, a longtime viewer actually recommended a uh, yarrow tincture. So I did a bunch of research on some tinctures that uh, is supposed to help with infection and things. That was awesome. I went to the oral surgeon and many of you said to get second opinions. So I, that, I went to that endodontist, I told you about that. I then went to the oral surgeon. It was a nightmare, he was a huge dick and I couldn't stand him. Like total GQ, too cool for school guy and I was immediately turned off by him. So instead of getting better news, I find out that not only they don't know what it is. It's like a cyst or uh, an infection or a mass. They have no idea what it is. And they won't know until they get in there to cut it out. But what they do know is that it is so around my teeth that the yarrow tincture won't even, like I can't even try to fight the infection off by myself because the infection has eaten away the the bone and I will have to have that filled back in with cadaver bone, which is sort of interesting since I work in a funeral home. I feel like that comes full circle, which is weird to me. So I went to the oral surgeon on Monday. Today is Thursday. I went to the oral surgeon on Monday. Last week, Monday through Wednesday, uh, my best friend Clint and I, we try to do a Clint Chevy trip every year. And we went up to Michigan. Well, we rented a cabin. It was awesome. We had a great time. Well, Thursday I got home and I had these like red bumps on my fingers and they were itching. I was like, what the heck? And I've had poison ivy multiple times. So I was like, eh, did I get into something? Because I didn't think I touched any plants. We were floating on the river. I was not in the bush, you know? So Friday, I had like a couple little somethings on my wrist. And then there was something on my toe. And I was like, what is this? Like it itches? Like this is so weird. You guys, Sunday, I wasn't even going to tell you guys this because first off, it's like, way TMI but like I said it just kind of pulls into the whole story of all of the effed up that has been happening in my world <laughs> so Sunday I wake up and Dan's like oh my god what's wrong with your neck I was like what do you mean and I go and I look like this no idea what it was none so I go to a ready med this idiot PA, which I could tell was an idiot from the minute he walked in the door, gave me medicine that was wrong and did not work. So when I woke up on Monday morning, you know, for my, I had to be at the oral surgeon at 750. That's what I looked like. So he walks in and he was like, how you doing this morning? He comes in Mr. GQ with his coffee. How you doing this morning? And I was like, uh, honestly, pretty shitty. And he was like, what? You're, you're, you're shitty? I was like, yeah, I don't normally look like this. I just broke out in this like overnight and I'm going to urgent care right after this. And he was like, oh, well, do you want to reschedule? And I was like, no, I've been waiting for this appointment. Like this is, this is a big deal. Like my teeth, the big deal. Like, no, I don't want to wait. Like I need to do it. So he he basically treated me like I was a leper the whole time I was there. Like that, those were the vibes I got. He definitely did not want to be anywhere near me, which I mean, I had no idea what it even was. I, I still don't. We have no idea what it was. It was some sort of re allergic reaction to something. I, I don't know. Like he thought maybe it was some bugs in the cabin, but Clint and I slept with him. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm trying to go really fast. Clint and I slept in the same bed and Clint didn't get anything. The urgent care guy that I went to after the oral surgeon said that I could have just been allergic to whatever bit me and he might not have been and still have gotten bit. Like, so who knows? But that dude, I'm totally fast forwarding because, you know, that's what I do. I jump all over the place. The the dude who was at the urgent care that I went to on Monday, different urgent care than where the idiot worked, that dude was amazing kid you not you guys he could have been bill Hader's brother he looked like him his mannerisms were like his his delivery that like sort of like dry sense of humor if you don't know who bill Hader is he was on snl he's been in movies look him up i'll post a picture here you probably know him if you see him he was awesome he was the highlight of all of this bs right so back up to the oral surgeon he tells me that I have to, like, it's worse than I expected. Like, I was hoping that with him looking at it, he would tell me something different, right? Yeah, no, worse because now I, I find out that my bone is gone and has to be replaced. I start crying. Like, I'm covered in this rash. You guys can still kind of see it, I think. I can. I'm covered in whatever this yuck is that has now spread up to my face. I mean... I couldn't handle it anymore and I cried. Now, not ugly cry, not ugly cry, but clearly like tears were in my eyes, I was upset. And he was like, yeah, well, sorry it's not what you wanted to hear, but I, I hope you have a good day. And picked up his, his coffee and walked out. Really? This was the vibe I got, you guys too cool for school. I was patient number yada yada of that day. And I was just one more bill to help him pay for his lake house. That was totally the vibe I got from that dude. So then I went to urgent care. I took Monday off. I was a mess. I got medicine. I'm at home Monday. I, you know, I'm sleeping. I'm napping. Ditto's napping on the couch with me. Well, Ditto gets up and is crying to go outside, goes outside, pukes, and eats grass. Then he proceeded to puke like a couple more times. And I was like, what the heck? So then he puked in the middle of the night on Monday night. Well, then like a couple times and it was all bile. So I'm sure you guys love hearing about my dog's puke. Uh, sorry, you guys are probably cringing so hard right now, but... Some of you might find this story amusing. I don't know. I have to find the humor in it. I have to. I, I just gotta. And I know a lot of you fur baby parents totally get it. So Tuesday come home, he'd puked once while we were at work. He was super lethargic and acting. I mean, you guys know Ditto from the last episode. He's like a whirling dervish, 100 mile an hour. Like that is Ditto. He was super lethargic. You could tell something was wrong. He was standing like all hunched, like he wanted to puke, but he couldn't puke. And he was super restless. He couldn't get comfortable. I called the vet as soon as the vet opened in the morning and got him in right away. So this is Wednesday, yesterday. So they take him back to be x-rayed and the doctor comes in, the vet, who's super cool, I love our vet. That's where they board. Everybody knows them, which is nice. Well, I don't know, I've never had dogs. I mean, you guys are probably like, this bitch needs to not have any more pets <laughs> because I obviously have issues with them. Any new viewers, we have a senior pug who has three legs. That's another video, maybe I'll link it up here. I, huh. Okay, so the vet comes in. He's like, I have good news and bad news. The good news is, it's a rock. I'm like, that's the good news? He's like, the bad news is, it needs to be removed. And I was like, okay, like right now? He was like, like right now. I'm like, awesome. So Ditto had emergency surgery yesterday and got this rock removed. The whole time, you guys will love this. The whole time, I'm like, Dan's dog, Dan's dog, my dog's perfect. Dan's dog eats rocks. 
I'm like, and he does. He like chews rocks out of the driveway. And I'm like, I don't even know what to do. Our entire driveway is gravel, like, like, like rocks, gravel. And he chews them and you yell at them and he, or you yell at him and he just like looks at you like you're nuts. I was actually just thinking Barbara from Flame and Fiber. She totally gets this. Pearl, this is something Pearl would do. Her dog. If you don't watch her, you should. I'm like, Dan's dog, Dan's dog. My dog's perfect, blah, blah. The vet calls after surgery and he's like, got the rock out. I won't go into the details because there are plenty more details, trust me. The good news was that they didn't have to take any of the um, intestine out because if it would have damaged the intestine enough, they would have had to have cut back, like cut. It kind of reminded me of Crohn's, if any of you know anyone with Crohn's, like they remove entire sections of your intestine and like connect the, the good stuff. Or that movie Centipede, don't ever, Human Centipede, don't ever, ever watch that, but that's immediately where my brain went for some reason, I don't know why. But trust me, don't watch that movie, but for those of you who know what that is, you get it. They cut the part of the intestine out and sew together the pink, part you know like the good part so we were hoping it was also less expensive if they didn't have to do that and they didn't have to do that they they kept it all intact now we still aren't out of the woods for three to five days he just came home today but the vet says it's a really pretty rock and I was immediately like shit I was like it's a pretty rock he was like yeah it's like translucent and has these really pretty markings. Yeah, that's one of my crystals. That that would be that would be me not being able to blame Dan. <laughs> not that I would blame Dan. You know, because he's Dan's dog. Anyway, Ditto the Rock Eater. He's home. They gave us doggy sedatives because he's supposed to remain calm, you guys, for the next two weeks. You tell me how that's gonna happen. So it's been eventful here, to say the least. All of those things. Oh, I guess I'm not over. Oh, you guys, I'm so messed up right now. Um, okay, so back to the dental thing. I called my dentist. I am a firm believer in intuition and trusting your gut. Uh, my parents' age, I feel like you guys come from, and there are a lot of viewers who are my parents' age. I feel like you guys come from a, a time when you didn't question doctors. And it, I, actually, I had a conversation with Mama Jean about it today, and she said the same thing. You know, that's kind of how her parents were as well. If a doctor tells you something, you just go with it whether you like it or not. Well, in this day and age, that's not the case. As you guys know, get second opinions, blah, blah, blah. I called my dentist and just flat out said, I got the office gal. She's very, very nice. I love my dentist also. I, some of you had mentioned like malpractice from that root canal because it kind of all started with that. It's just not in me to do that. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I hate confrontation. It makes me feel icky. Negative energy affects my my mental and physical health. It's just not something that I do well. High five to all you go-getters who like have that ability. I just don't, it's really, really hard for me. The, the fact that I called my dentist and was like, hey, I'm not cool with this is a big step for me, it, honestly. Just intuitively in my gut, I did not feel right about it. I did not care for the endodontist or the oral surgeon. Actually, the endodontist wasn't as bad. After the oral surgeon fiasco, I just did not feel comfortable. So I called him and I said, hey, I really don't feel comfortable with those guys that you sent me to. I'm sure their ability is fine, but in order for me to have this big of a thing handled, I need to feel good about it and I don't. So can we discuss a uh, plan B or another option? Is there another doctor? Like, like whatever, I need some guidance here. Let me just tell you, my dentist, I have always loved. His bedside manner is amazing. That's totally what I told the chick on the phone. I was like, it's one of the reasons that I love him. And the dudes he sent me to had the bedside manner of a honey badger. I mean, 
I don't know where Honey Badger came from. Because <laughs> Honey Badger don't give a shit. That's why. And that's how I felt about them. Anyway. And she was like, I totally understand. I totally get it. He usually calls me back. He After hours, which the last thing in the world I want to talk about at like eight o'clock on a work night is that kind of stuff. But it's, you know, he has to do it after he talks to his patients. So we were lifting last night and jamming out to nine inch nails, having a great workout. And my phone rings and I'm like, shit, this is the dentist. Like I had to take it. It was the office gal. He didn't even call me. Right? And the office gal says, Hi there, it's yada yada with yada yada office and I talked to doctor and he said that that's your best that's your best option and and that's your option. Really? Really he said that. She's like, "Yeah, I'm sorry." That's his answer. He has been my dentist my entire adult life. My entire adult life, my entire dental history. I'm almost 40 as an adult is with his office and that was his answer. On major mouth surgery, he has no other option. I was basically pissed all night last night and I was thinking about it. I am so frustrated and tired over this situation that part of me wanted to just like do it so that I could just pay for it and get it over with. Like I want it behind me. I, the thought of starting over completely and shopping for a new dentist and all that made me ill. But at the same time, it's like, no, I do not feel comfortable with these dudes. So I got on my insurance today. I researched. I picked a doctor. I called there. I had a 20-minute conversation with the office manager. I have an appointment for a second opinion next Tuesday. It sounds super promising, and that is where I am in the dental saga. So thank you very, very much for all of you. I mean, I seriously got so many comments on this. I know I am not alone. Maybe my story will help you guys not feel alone. Maybe people who don't have dental things will now know that, that this can kind of like sneak up on you and happen. I hope it was not a total W downer for you guys for me to blather on about this, but I feel like I sort of started the conversation and I didn't want to like just end it. Yeah, I brought you up to speed and then I feel like the rash and the dog and like all that stuff happened in between it and that you guys would kind of understand how it all was together. So for those of you who are just coming back, this is where I'll timestamp it if you didn't care about any of that. And uh, let's get on to what this podcast is actually about, which is fiber <laughs> and making things. My soldering. It's not fiber related, but well, it is kind of fiber related because for those of you who did stick around for the dental thing, a lot of you have asked, I, I am going to sell these pieces and all of the proceeds are going to go toward <laughs> my mouth. It can't even go toward yarn, but whatever, it's fine, it's fine. Rolling with the punches, right? I am currently researching how I'm going to do that. I'm thinking probably Etsy. As some of you know, you OGs out there to the podcast, I don't start things lightly. I did a lot of research before I actually started the podcast because I wanted it done right, like artwork and editing and so on and so forth. Selling these things is the same. So while I am um, researching the best way to do that. I am also making things. So I will definitely keep you guys posted as to when these things are up. And I'll just show you kind of what I have been working on thus far. So these are some, this is that Susu. This is, that's Miss Babs, but now I can't remember the name of the sweater that I made out of it. Why do I want to say Dirty Martini? Did I knit a sweater called Dirty Martini or is it just because I drink martinis? I'll put a picture here and the name of the sweater because I don't remember. Anyway, um, these are silver. It's non-lead solder. I have other ones I showed on the last podcast. Some of these I'm going to make necklaces and some of them I am going to do magnets and some of them I am going to do needle minders for cross stitchers and 
sewers. I don't know. Do sewers use needle minders? Anyway, so there's going to be some options there with these sorts of things. This guy was one of my Celosia that I dried. I don't know if you guys remember when I pressed those. I'll probably keep that for myself. It was when I first started. There's lead in this. But I like the dangly. That was a learning process. And then my grandma's teacups. I'm actually going to see my cousins this weekend. So I made, whoops, glare. I made this one. For those of you who didn't see that episode, we had a bird in our house and I have my grandma's teacup collection. And this bird knocked two of those teacups off and broke them into pieces. And I was forlorn about it. And no use crying over spilt milk, right? When life gives you lemons, get out the tequila. So it was sort of a happy accident. So those are my grandma's teacups, my cousins and my sister are very familiar with the set. And I know that they're going to love having uh, that little piece of grandma. So it, it did end up being not a terrible thing. He only, he or she only broke two cups and I'm turning, turning it into something cool. This is what I did tons of work on. Sunday, while my entire body was inflamed with um, whatever the hell it was. So I made tons of progress keepers. I have these little beads. There's a bunch of quartz points in there. I forget what this stone's called. I'm gonna have to look it up. It is, it is a pure stone though. Um, these are just glass beads. I put all of my progress keepers on lobster, no, not lobster claws, earring backs, because I'm not a fan of the lobster claws. I feel like, I don't know, you guys tell me, why would you choose a lobster claw over a closure like this? Um, I feel like these are easier to get on and off. They don't pull as hard on my knitting and I can do it one handed. Like if I'm knitting and digging it out, I feel like the lobster claws tend to, to just be really finicky for me and hard to get on my knits. While I am taking my time getting stuff posted, uh, I am making. So when I do get to the point of maybe selling some things, I'll have a really good update. My only other FO is I crocheted a pouch for my tarot cards. This is, oh, I can't remember the deck. I can't say the guy's name. I'll, I'll put the deck title here. He, I wanna say he's a German artist. This deck was gifted to me by Z. For any of you guys who watch her, Z Formation. Um, she's Z Formation on Instagram and she has a podcast and it is something I can't remember. I'll put it here. It's, it's ZN and some numbers. Sorry guys, I suck at this. I should have wrote that in my notes and I didn't. But this deck is larger than a standard deck and I didn't have any pouches that fit. So this is hand spun that I just did not too long ago. It's my, the last hand spun that I did and I just made this up. So for, for you crocheters, I crocheted a chain until I thought it was the width of the deck. I didn't even have the deck. I just went off memory. And then I did a couple increases. Like I crocheted around and then I did a couple increase rounds to get the bottom and then I crocheted through the back loop to kind of get this flat bottom, sorry for the lighting, and then I just crocheted straight up. Then as I got up here, I did two decreases on either side to kind of pull it in a little so that the deck fits in there a little snug at the top. It kind of gives it a little, a little hug at the neck if you will. I did not wash or block it. I'm sure that if I did, it would grow up over the deck, but I I think it's just fine like this. I can get it. So it's my only other FO. I did get some stitching done on my Moon Moth Pin Keep. Here again, can't remember where I was the last time. I think I had the black done and I was just starting the white. So I think I got most of that white done since the last time you saw it. 
For those of you who are cross stitchers, that pattern is by Stacy Nash Primitives and it'll look like that when it's finished. So I'm almost done. I only have two and a half fingers left. Oh, and the, and the uh, little dots I need to fill in. I did not touch my Hermione's Everyday sock since the last time, so I'm not even going to show you. I am super, super, super loving my Nordiska, like hard, it's basically all I wanna work on. I am not doing the color work on this one. If you wanna know more about that, you can watch the last episode. It's funny because I watched Amy Beth today and I'm way behind. I'm always way behind on my YouTube queue, like way, way behind. So I don't know if it's her latest episode or not, but whatever episode I watched, we were at the same, we're at the same spot on the sweater. Um, I do have my knitting I love needle, circular needle holder, which I love. Look how cool this is. This is felt. I will, um, sorry, the lighting is terrible. I will link her stuff. I've talked about her before. This yarn is Mindville Wool Company. Mindville Wool Project. Do I even have a label? Of course I don't. Why would I do that? I know that it's DK weight and it's uh, the Constellation colorway, which one of you mentioned that you tried to look for and they don't have anymore. This is deep, deep stash that I got from Simply Socks, so it wouldn't surprise me if you can't find the colorway. I hope it shows up okay. So back here, it just looks gray. I cannot remember where I was the last time, I think somewhere in here. So I've gotten, you know, quite a bit done. This is V-neck sweater. I'm not doing the color work. I'm doing it all this way. And then the next one I knit will be color work and I'll make any alterations that I want. It has this super cool, gosh, I don't even know if you can see it well. There maybe a little. It has this super cool cable raglan, I wanna say accent, it's not accent. Detail, words are hard. I just now started the body knitting in the round. The schematic is, this sweater has like kind of poofy sleeves. It's big oversized sleeves and it's cropped. And her schematic, it only gives a measurement from shoulder to hem. And I kind of wish that it gave from underarm to hem. So I'll figure that out. I mean, not a big deal, but it is something that I noticed that it would have been nice to have. Um, I did start my Helix knitting back up in here because I ran out of my first gain. Like I was getting real thin on my first gain, so I wanted to start it. Um, I did end up looking at a couple different alternating skein videos. I went ahead with Grace O'Neill's uh, alternating skeins of Babel Yarns, which a lot of you suggested, as well as my knitting group friends. They all use that. The way that you do that one, which I mentioned very pink knits on the last episode, she does not do it that way, is you slip three stitches. So you have two balls going, you come up to your active yarn, three stitches before that, you slip it, you slip those three stitches and pick up with the next ball. It's super easy and you should check out Grace's video. It'll be linked if you are interested in Helix Knitting. I highly recommend it. Uh, I currently have three skeins going. Now, my friends Lindsay and Diana only do two skeins um, at a time, but I just wanted to do three because I'm also going to do it on the sleeves. I wanted to make sure it was good and, and you know, mixed in there. I only did two and then once I split off for the body or, or you know, split the sleeves, I added a third one in there. So I'm currently working with three balls of yarn and you know, I got all my ball sacks going. It's ball sacks galore, y'all. Maybe that should be the name of the episode all the ball sacks. So I am loving this knit a whole bunch and I can't wait to wear it. 
is there anything else I want to say about this? Oh, another, it's not helix knitting, but another alternating skein option that was mentioned is called the Magic Method, which is by S. Diva Designs. She's going to come up later. It's really funny that somebody mentioned that video, which I would also try. I just had already started doing the Grace O'Neill Method before I heard about that, but I'm also going to link that below if anyone else is interested in an alternating skeins option that isn't helix knitting. I have floaties in front of me. So her name is Karen and she's going to come up here in a bit, which it's such a small world and everything happens for a reason, I guess. That is all for my knitting, you guys. Knitting, crocheting, making. I like I'm pathetic right now. There are so many things that I want to make. Life's just been throwing me some curveballs, and uh, yeah, there's that. Okay, so the Quiet Queers Craft Along has concluded at Knit Boop, just posted her winners today. Congratulations if any of you uh, are winners who are watching. And that also means that the Corrado is Awesome giveaway is over. And the winner of that is Therese. Her Ravelry name is Little Flower Knits, so congratulations, Therese. I will go ahead and let Corrado know that you are the one who won so that you can get with him and figure out what patterns you'd like. The book mail is still going strong. I'm loving that thread. You guys are making super awesome stuff. That is done the last day of summer, which is September 23rd. There is a chatter thread, chatter away. Uh, I did wanna comment on some of the FOs, but I didn't wanna mess up the, the FO thread. Some of you posted in both the chatter and the FO thread, and in that case, I replied. I will tell you I've been shit for replying on Ravelry and even Instagram e email, like all of my, comments. I haven't been great. It, it's been taking me a little longer. Just wah boo hoo. Life's in the way. I always will reply. I did go through not too long ago and notice some comments that I missed. I apologize for that. Like I really do try to at least give everything a heart so you guys know that I've read it. Anyway, the book mail, I'm loving that. I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying it as well. If you're interested in that, head on over to the Ravelry group. It'll be linked below and you can kind of see that. It's basically knitting, crocheting, making anything out of a book and uh, you can enter over there. But it's not over until September 23rd, so you guys still have plenty of time. There are actually some books that I wanna look into, I think one's called Knit Geeks or Geek Knits. I, I keep seeing that one come up. I want to see uh, what patterns are in there. Yeah, so that's been a lot of fun. Thank you guys for uh, participating in that and uh, putting your posting your stuff on the Ravelry group. Miscellaneous random stuff is going to be a few of these, these things I wrote down because I wanted to remember. Some of you ask me why I don't use stemware for my martinis because, you know, that is the classic. Uh, mar a dirty martini comes in a martini glass, right? Shaken, not stirred, 007, blah, blah. The reason that I don't use stemware is, baby? Yeah. You wanna tell them why I don't use stemware? She breaks stuff. <laughs> Well, there goes the light. Yeah, I break things. I can't be trusted with stemware. Like, no, I'm that person that's she like... just broke the dog. Oh, see, I knew I wasn't going to live it down. <laughs> I'm that... First off, martini glasses, you know, like when you're doing this, it like flies out of the glass. And then you have this stem, so you'll turn and I'll like hook the stem. It's just not a good thing. And I like it on the rocks because I like the ice to melt. It lasts longer. So, yeah, that's why... I, it's a beer day because this is special beer. I guess I forgot to mention that. We went to Dark Horse Brewing um, on our way home from our Michigan trip, and I picked this up at Dark Horse Brewing. So that's where this came from. It was sort of like, I'm like, oh, I'll have a new beer to drink on the podcast. However, after the last week, I kind of feel like I should have been drinking a martini. <laughs> 
I've also had some new viewers ask me about the stuff room and if I have a stuff room tour. And I did let them know that yes, I did a stuff room tour. However, it is old. So things have changed. I've rearranged some things. I actually feel like some things need revamping in here. So if you guys are interested in a new stuff room tour, I would totally do that at some point if any of you care to see it. I know that a lot of new viewers are interested in what's in the stuff room and it probably wouldn't hurt to have a little updated because little things get added and shifted around all the time. I should go back and watch that video because I don't even remember what it looked like. I know that I had my table here at that time, so I know stuff has moved. The Knit One Sip Two Girls, the Joan or Joanne, it is Joan like Joan of Arc. I'll never forget again. Am I getting ditto? Ditto was laying outside, but he's gonna spend some time in here with me. Do you wanna say hi? Do you wanna tell everybody you got one of mama's crystals? And now it's the most expensive crystal she owns? Gifts, because you guys always flip and amaze me with your kindness and generosity. Kathy, who was a winner of one of the giveaways, she sent me this super cute card look. Thank you. And then she sent this super cute little butterfly magnet, which I will not let Ditto eat, but it lives here on my, my I have an old train case, which should have been in the stuff room tour, but you might see earlier. And then she got me this, or included in the card, this little metal camper, and it says happy camper. And there's this little heart, which you can barely see, but isn't it cute? All, all super cute little things that I just tuck right in the stuff room. So thank you, Kathy. Next is Rewind to the Magic Method of Alternating Skeins. Her name is Karen. Her YouTube is S Diva Designs, and she has all sorts of tutorial videos. To be honest, there's a lot of stuff I, I don't know. Uh, like those Cricut machines. She does a lot of that kind of stuff, but she had like the alternating skein video. I mean, it is basically a plethora of tutorials of all kinds of stuff. Her YouTube will be linked below, so go check her out. She is S Diva Designs, designer, blogger, and YouTube partner. There's her card, and her name's Karen. She is Scrappy Diva. I think on Instagram. She thanked me for the podcast, which is so flippin' sweet. I enjoy doing this and I hope that like sometimes, especially for these super rambly episodes, I'm like, who's going to listen to this? It's like, you know, I don't wanna be that person that people roll their eyes like, why is she talking about dumb shit? Why doesn't she just talk about knitting? I'm here for the knitting sort of thing. But then there's other people who like love the shenanigans. So I, I don't know. I. I'm just rolling with it. Some things are heavier in the knitting, whatever. I don't need, like at this point, you guys, my brain is mush. Anyway, she thanked me for the podcast and making fun things that inspired her. And she said she knew that I would absolutely love this fabric. She made me this bag. And like, of course, I love the fabric. It's the only way I can use real martini glasses. <laughs> As if this bag isn't cute enough. Look, it's like this, right? Like that's how it sits, but the zipper and Dan is mowing while I'm podcasting. So that's what that noise is, apologize. So it sits like this, right? But it opens like this. So I open it, it has these two little pull tabs. It has this cute little, and I don't, I don't think she sells these. Not that I saw. I'll have the links to all of her stuff below. Maybe she has a, a tutorial on the pattern. I. I should look for that. It's the cutest little bag. Watch this. It's like magic. It kind of reminds me a little bit of my round rabbit bag. Does anyone remember that bag? Okay, so you open it, right? It goes out to a box. Isn't that awesome? And the fabric on the inside's knit. I thought it was so cool. I mean, you can open it up and find your notions. You don't have to like dig around in there. 
if any of you guys want this pattern or if she sells these bags like I'll ask her I suppose I should have asked her before I recorded sorry I didn't but I just love it it's so stinking cute so thank you so much Karen it's awesome another gift that I received actually a while ago and somehow it got erased from my notes and I spaced it until I was looking for it and then I was like I don't remember ever talking about this on the on the podcast Zoe was one of the giveaway winners and oh ditto's on drugs I think he's a little out of it they have him on sedatives because they they know him they don't want him to like you know be rambunctious and rip whatever they cut anyway speaking of dogs that's kind of a good segue the episode that I mentioned that Olive was diagnosed with bladder cancer who is our elderly three-legged pug who's also diabetic and has dry eye recently got diagnosed with bladder cancer it just so happened that the episode that I mentioned that she got diagnosed with bladder cancer Zoe was releasing a pattern called I think it's yucca y-u-k-a I don't think it would be yucca I think it would be pronounced yucca and that is her rescue dog and she said that the sock pattern was inspired I'll put a picture here so you can see it she gifted me the sock pattern and it was very close to the time she released it as to when I mentioned that Olive was diagnosed with bladder cancer so she sent it to me yucca also has quite the story like Olive does. I, they're both a little bit like cats and have lived many, many lives and are still with us. Yuka's story was she was actually a street dog in Cairo and they found her when she was three years old and they she lived with a family for like 10 years and then for some reason they had to give her up or it wasn't working i didn't get that part of the story but then zoe got her uh zoe does a rescue if she's on instagram and i can find a picture of yuka i'll insert one if not i'll pretend like i didn't just say that totally lost track of what i was talking about so zoe wrote this pattern i think she said she was inspired by yuka's flappy ears so thank you for that pattern zoe i'm sorry that i'm just now talking about it i don't know how i spaced it so i apologize you know i love all the doggy stories which it's so it's actually kind of fitting you know the universe works in mysterious ways maybe i wasn't meant to talk about zoe's sock pattern until today because of all of the um high maintenance shenanigans that are happening with my dogs in this episode the last gift and actually last thing I have is from Aquila. Aquila Dehan is a podcaster. She does a Lefty Knitter podcast. I have not opened this yet. I just picked this up from the post office. Usually I can't wait to open things, which is why you see things already opened, but the timing of this one was right. So we're just gonna go ahead and open it up now. What, what you think? I can't get it. I can't find any scissors. This is why Dan is scared to leave me alone. <laughs> okay. Do what you gotta do, right? Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't even know what it is yet. But it says grab yo drank right there. Chain stitch embroidery, die trying is where it's from. Oh, I'm excited. I got a sticker and I put these, I, I put all stickers on my toolbox. I have like a total girl toolbox. It's actually like this color. Oh my God, it's a bandana. Check out that labeling. Look at that. Like, that is legit, man. 100% handmade bandana, traditional extract printing, color fast cotton. Are you kidding me? <gasps> I love it. Oh my God, that's awesome. Look at that. Oh my God, I love it. Look, you guys, it's embroidered. 
she was worried. She's like, I'm second guessing myself. How could you be second guessing yourself? This is awesome. <gasps> Dude. It has everything I love. It has succulents. It has succulents. It has grab your drank. It has moons and stars. That is so cool. I love it. Thank you so much. And you know, this is actually, um, this will make a really cool tarot mat as well. Because that's what I use is bandanas. And then, of course, I'll wear it. Oh, my God. I love it. Now I want to check out this shop. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. That is so cool. Thank you so much. Wow, that's an awesome way to end stuff. Thank you so very much, you guys. I know that this was not a typical like nitty episode and I'm sure it's going to be so flipping long. Thanks for being you. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for hanging out. Hopefully I, uh, Gave you some laughs while you were knitting. Just remember, be nice. Don't be like the dickhead oral surgeon as you have some girl in your chair crying and you tell her to have a good day. Be nice and don't forget to be a ray of fucking sunshine. Huh? Thank you again so very much. Until we meet again, like, thumbs up, subscribe, all that heavy horse shit. We'll catch you later. Bye. Hopefully next time, my dog will not have had to have had emergency surgery and I'll know what is happening with my face. See ya!